It's retrograde, stress, and anxiety, and late starts this morning. We're going to be dealing with that. We're doing breath work. So uh, pull up uh, a nice chair or get comfortable. We're going to be going on with Breath Messiah and pulling up and doing some breath work to uh, start our morning off, get our week ready, coming into Christmas. Looking forward to um, the today and today's session. If you uh, can put down in the comments how you're feeling today. <clears throat> Yeah, looking forward to seeing what's going on. And we may have a few interruptions in internet. Our internet uh, here in the mountains has uh, decided to go down. And we've had a whole host of issues <clears throat> with retrograde, including menus go off of our websites, everything you can imagine. Okay, here we go. And Breath Messiah coming up live. Can you guys give us uh, a bunch of likes and also can you forward this off to a friend or two or forward it off to yourself? Um, somehow we got to get the algorithm back up. Hey, how are you Gary? doing? Gary? Doing good. Another day. Another day. Yeah, we had a little bit of a late start here and we might get some funny internet. We uh, were in the mountains. We're on cell signals. For some reason, our internet is down. Okay. Mercury so, retrograde, man. Yeah. Universe, universing. <laughs> so, yes absolutely so i got a quick question for you because i know um you, your birthday's coming up here uh pretty shortly right sure so what would you say throughout this last year what has your breath taught you um through this last year what has my breath taught me i think the 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 biggest thing that i've learned this year through breath <clears throat> is that is that I'm I'm safe even when I think I'm not safe. Um, that the triggers to breathe are habitual, and um, and as I do as I calm my stress down more and more, I need less and less breath. Like I sitting right now, I breathe two and a half to three breaths per minute, yeah. which and I haven't done outside of you know Tuesdays and the fashion maneuvers. I haven't done an act of breath practice. I've <laughs> so. And that's the other part. <clears throat> the other part that I've, that I've learned this year is that when your fascia is open, you breathe less. 100%. 1,000%. That's, I was going to say, like, I'm on day 18. I'm doing it twice a day, fascia maneuvers, and obviously being focused on breath. The way I describe fascia maneuvers is literally like making space in the body to breathe better. Yeah, and and you know something when you when you when you're in person with us, um, you, I get people to do this. I get them to wrap their hands around my arm, and I go, and and you can feel my arm or my leg breathing. Yeah, just like you know, because I because when we sit in water, we absorb water. That's how I did two weeks without water in my fast. Yeah. And and technically, this is water around us. It's just a it's just a thinner version. Yeah, yeah. So we are supposed to breathe or respirate like a membrane, not, and the lungs is only the very first part of that for the muscle skeletal system. 100%. It, it's tough. funny to see people look on their face when they touch and I breathe and my arm goes. I mean, it's, it's what it goes back once again, like, why do we think we're any different than plants, right? Like, yeah. You know, you know we, we've been told how we are. And, and I, you know, this is what I say. It's like, even if all the other ancient practices um, were correct, well, first of all, they can't be correct. Otherwise, everybody would be completely healthy. Yeah. There has to be some manipulation of even the most pure yogic practices and all that, because cause otherwise, generally, people would all be healthy because people are doing exactly. these ancient practices more than ever. And I find that quite often they're the sickest people. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, it makes you think, right? It makes you think. It's like, so the way I describe it is we have a macro, like a spreadsheet with formulas. And, and if you put in the formula and if I do this, this happens in the body, this responds, this is my energy. It all, all the formulas work. But what they did is because you have to have, people have to be able to figure it out. Otherwise, we would catch on. But yeah. what they did is they took the value of square number one, what is a human being? Mm -hmm. And then they messed with that value so that 
it all works until it doesn't work. And I found this about every practice is that every single practice that I've, or discipline of medicine or care, it works until there's a point where it's like, oh, I don't know what to do. <clears throat> and it never works completely. There's nothing that I, I've, I've done every conceivable practice on the planet earth to try and work myself out of my situation. And at the end of it, it came down to me doing these silly little movements every day. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause what the way, when you just described it, it's like, I imagine driving up a hill or like even driving down a hill. And then right when you get to what you thought would be like flat, it's like the road just is. And now you're like, well, it was working to this point. Like now what do I like? Now it's like a panic because it's it got me this far. What do I do now? And it's like, start over, you know? You know, this happened for me a lot of times. So I spent two and a half million dollars <clears throat> going from therapist to therapist, discipline to discipline over 20 years. Mm -hmm. Then um, then when I was on my government-sponsored vacation, um, I, I got I got out. And then I was really busted up. So I went to the only person who ever got me out of pain. And I said, your neuromuscular practice, this, the world needs this, so let's build it. And we started the Rubenstein Center. And that was 12 years ago. Um, I, think, I think the Rubenstein Center would have been, say 2013, it would have been 12 years ago this month. So probably, it probably was like 12 years ago right now. Yep. And, um, and then what happened there was uh, we, we started the clinic and I was using this, this neuromuscular technology to keep myself out of pain and it worked really fine. And then all of a sudden I had to do it more and more and more, just like a drug. Because you're dependent on the, 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 yeah. Yeah, and it worked for less amount of time. And that's when I wanted to bring in other modalities. That's how I split with Dr. Rubenstein and said, I wanted to bring in other modalities because I, I wasn't feeling good. And I'm not going to sit in a practice and ask people yeah. for $15,000 for treatment if, if it didn't work for me at the end. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and that's why it's, it's like, that's the same for me. It's like self-discovery because of it's no longer doing what it needed to do or it no longer is the outside of me for something to do. It's like, okay, what do I have with what I can do with what I was born with? You know, you know, it's it's like I, I you, you may hear me say this quite a bit. I say when the pain of, of staying the same is greater than the pain of change, human beings change. And and so when people haven't found their answer yet, I just I, and there's and they say they're still looking. It's just the pain isn't great enough. Mm. And and they'll go, no, I've been in like all this pain for all these years. <laughs> and I'm like, look at if you if really the pain ain't great enough otherwise you would be coming through yeah. this or another way of saying it is they always think the pain is physical when when emotions are what cause all disease and i am a hundred percent certain on that there's no very no deviation for that yeah. so they may be working on all the physical stuff and this happens a lot they work on the physical but they're still not okay so so off of that right emotions physical spiritual psychological would you say most people are unaware of the emotional suppressed things yeah so people will have all the spiritual because we have intellectualized our spiritual process we are a spirit we yeah. are we are photonic we generate yeah. light we are light beings by that but we don't know what that really means though we we know it from an intellectual <clears throat> knowing right. of words so but. so here here's something is that movement is life and movement the original movement is breath mm -hmm. and so if i even have a small constriction in my breathing like my rib cage is constricted my my body's constricted in some way you know my shoulders are tight or whatever my traps are tight that affects the amount of breath and it affects where that breath can get to and so <clears throat> so the the origin of disease is the reduction of breath yeah because because the disease affects your breathing or your movement and if it's affecting your breathing therefore it's affecting your movement right and think about the name disease just simply means that the body's not at ease yeah. so if i'm fearful in my body if i feel fear that's not i don't feel at ease and and if i have a low level that stops and restricts my breathing my capabilities if i carry that emotion <clears throat> for a long period of time it does things it rolls my shoulders forward puts my neck out makes me hunch yeah. down 
And you know what? Do you, what do you, what's the standard posture of a young girl today? Uh, yeah. And then we put heels on. We put heels on, and they go. Mm. And then that pushes that pushes force up into here, so that it can't contract the breath here. So so heels. What they do is why women like to wear heels, or well, I can't say all women anymore today, but why people, human beings, like to wear heels is that when you wear heels, it, you push up here. But if you stand on your tippy toes, try it. Put your hands here and stand on your tippy toes. It pushes pressure into here. Mm. That constricts the way that the chest can move. And what uh, that it's, like, does, it's like having a really tight backpack in a way. Yeah. So then what that does is it pushes up here. Well, guess what? It, we're the reciprocal. So if you put your hand here, you. So if you put one, to put your left hand behind your right shoulder blade and right hand on the right chest, stand up and you'll feel it tighten under there. <clears throat> that yeah. tightening motion, what that does is it squeezes your adrenals, giving you adrenaline. So why, why people like to wear heels is because it pushes a little bit of adrenaline, which creates the emotion of excitement. So there's an excitement, which then is translated into what we perceive as sexual energy. So that's why they feel sexier when they're wearing their heels. So interesting. It's also interesting because it's like the body creates stress to express an emotion, right? Because it's, you emotion. know what I mean? Or to feel or to perceive a, a, a feel, you know what I mean? Like, yes. You, yeah, that's, yeah. So, so think about it this way. Um, so yeah, let's talk about this because it'll lead into breath and I'll show you, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some, some human garage hands. Because we don't we don't publish this, but yeah. and we will at some point. But there's a reason specifically why we don't publish. Yeah. And um, so you have if you were to step on a piece of glass, you know, from the 28 day reset, it takes a second and a half for that glass to go up the nerves, go through a process through the humiculus, the cerebellum, go back down for motor control. So when we step on, um, you know, when I, I was doing nerve conduction testing with a patient. And I'm sitting there with all my smart scientists and doctors, and, they're, and I'm like, well, how do they move when they step on glass then? They said, well, it's a ganglion reflex. And I said, that, that just doesn't make sense. I mean, I hear what you're saying, but that means that if I step on glass, I go boink. I have no control. And when I step on a glass or something sharp, I'm moving in a controlled fashion to danger, or away from danger. But I move instantaneously which means that it takes a uh, second and a half. That means that it takes 0.75 seconds at least for that signal to get to the brain or 0.5 seconds. Well, yeah. I'm moving before that 0.5 seconds is up. So I'm moving intelligently, coordinating all the systems of the body before the brain and the muscle skeletal system knows that there's a threat. So that means that the brain and the muscle skeletal system, muscles don't move the body. So then the question is, what do muscles do for the body? Well, if I'm going to lift something and I can't lift it, I stabilize it. So muscles stabilize the movement of the body. So what moves the body? When I do this, I create pressure. Pressure changes the body, the pressurized body. Yep. There's 2,000 pounds of pressure on our body, 14.7 pounds per square inch. That means that we're actually exerting 2,000 pounds of pressure up. It takes 50,000 pounds of force to tear fascia. It's the same as a, as a piece of steel, because when someone rips a quad or a peck in a gym, it sounds like someone shot a gun on a quad. Yeah. Yeah. Bang. yeah. Right? It so, so, that, so you think about it, that means that we're moving <clears throat> that much force around inside of our body, and it's through a series of membranes or layers of, of pressure. Yeah. So then, so then think about this. So if, if the brain is not moving the body, the brain is then responding to the movement of the body to stabilize the body safely. If I put electricity on my muscle, like if I put tens okay. unit on here, it goes boom. And then I let it go, it goes boom. It doesn't go like this. It goes boom, involuntary jerking. So when I fire a signal to the muscle, it involuntarily jerks. Yep. But what, you know, and that's why when we do yoga, and we're like. Ah, uh, it's the same thing. It's involuntary jerking. Now the yeah. fascia, 
is stable is making the movement but the the muscle if it's too tight it's like it's like like tension trying to pull like this is your this is your your leg the fascia gets into a position and it's like oh it's trying to hold and, and that muscle's contracting but it's, it has a, only a, a violent contraction so the fascia has to stabilize that movement so then <clears throat> the question is where does movement come from so how do I get a signal before I move? I have to have an emotion called a desire. Yeah. So because I can have a thought like I want to get a drink, but if I don't have a desire to get a drink, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. So emotion, energy in motion <clears throat> moves the body. So I have a stimulation. So I'm going to say it's from the field. I can't prove this part yet. Yeah. But the yeah, field yeah. says, hey, dummy, you stubby little human there. You're a little dehydrated. You need some water. And I go, oh, okay, what is that? Oh, <clears throat> I got a stimulation. So that stimulation, poof, creates an emotion. What is it? Am I okay? Am I safe? Oh, I remember that one. That's a, that's a, des that's a desire. Okay, what do I desire? I desire beverage. What kind? All the narratives. Soda. So, I, so then once I get the stimulation, and I get an emotion, it drives a thought. Yeah. So the thought is way down the chain. And the thought says, I want to get emotion. So the thought says, okay, let's coordinate all the activities. So the fascia starts to move with the desire. And then the thought is moving us towards the desire. Yeah. It, I know exactly. I know. Yeah. <clears throat> exactly this. So yesterday I was um, listening to Three Magic Words, right? And they were saying essentially, what creates us, whatever is our conviction. So our conviction to me is like, how confident are you moving with your breath, with your flow, with your ideas, with, you know what I mean? Like, like how can you live in a way that's like sturdy, right? If, if all these things are stabilizing you to create something, then what is your like, you know, what is, what is, what is taking you on the path and what is, the attitude you have on the path and that's life you know yeah and and so <clears throat> emotion is what moves the body well emotion is because we're taught to ignore it is dysregulated so we get jerky mm -hmm. sudden movements which fire stress hormones this is why a qigong master is like <clears throat> you ever see a have you ever seen uh, a fat Qigong master? I don't think so. <laughs> no, because <clears throat> they're balanced with their emotions. And this was my thing when I started, when I stopped working out to keep my body fit. Yeah. And I just did fascial maneuvers in the old video there. I got fat. And I was doing these videos and people were like, you can't talk about health. You're a fat slob. Go back pudgy i mean for a year people called me shit yeah and i i chose not to do anything but just to do the maneuvers i wanted to see if i didn't do anything what would happen and then that's how i came to my own belief system about emotions and weight so mm. so the thing is is that we think that it's math but it's calories in calories out i mean we have lots of people that try to prove it and, and i'm on the clinical side going yeah, but what about all these cases that don't work? Well, it's their metabolism. Well, define metabolism for me. Like, yeah, show yeah. me how I can really measure it. Yeah, if you can't measure it, you can't manipulate it. Yeah, and and so the so the idea is is that is that I have water as a solvent. Emotions are toxic. They release when they're stored and released. It creates a toxic. You can see it on people's face. You can. It comes out on rashes. Yeah. So when that emotion in the liver, when someone holds a lot of anger, they get a fatty liver. Like I get this all the time. Well, I don't drink alcohol. How do I have a non-fatty liver? My sister-in-law got a, a liver transplant. She doesn't drink alcohol. All that anger in the liver that hasn't been processed. Yeah, so the water goes around the emotion, the organ, and all that fascial tissue, all that, all that webbing. The water and the tubelets sit there. If you want to watch it, fascia magnified 25 times, you see water moving through these little wesh, mesh tubes. So it pumps up waiting for that emotion to release. And the emotion doesn't release there. That water stays there waiting for it. If it stays there too long, eventually in that tissue, it gets brown or putrid. 
brown fat. Yeah, if it keeps staying there too long, it gets white fat. And then the, then the question of these smart scientists and, and athletes now, they're saying, what's the difference between, you know, apatose fat and fat? Like they're asking these questions. And I'm saying there ain't no difference. It's all the same thing. It's water that has been, that's mixed with your collagen and everything that's stayed there waiting yeah. for that emotional release. And when you release it, when you have a big emotional release and everybody sweats and then all this stuff comes out and that's what the breath is doing. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to actually be moving emotions out of the body. And here's another one too. We do this stuff on urine, urine therapy and everybody's like, there's all these toxins in your body. And it's like, and you got to get them out and you're drinking it back in. I'm like, for all you smart people, less than 5%, it's actually around 3% of your toxins are released by your urine. 70% is lungs. released by your breath. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then and then twenty uh, twenty seven percent is released by urination or sorry defecation and sweating. So we v virtually do no toxins through our urine. It's very very low. Uh, it's just trace trace, trace amounts. That goes back to the cell blocks, right? Our urine is waste, right? If we we have to dispose of this in a certain way, right? This is bad, you know. <laughs> yeah, and there's there's you know like we. We we put it out. I mean, we we uh, we took a ten thousand user uh, follower. No, I saw. Like, I saw. I saw. Trust yeah. me. I'll be, yeah. Yeah, and we're. But I'm. But I'm like. I'm like. Hey, I, I'm gonna put truth out. You don't like truth. You, you don't like that version of truth. And, and and if you feel that that version of truth out of every, I had this one guy. I've been doing fascial maneuvers for so long. It changed my life for the better. But if you're gonna post that stuff, I'm done. And I'm like, so you're gonna quit something that changed your life because you didn't like one thing I said, like. <laughs> so so let me ask you this though because this is what i would say until you do something you don't really know right when, that's what i did i didn't know and, and, and i've done it too and i've done it too and the reason i did it was you know when when i took some mushrooms one time my body told me like keep this for later and i was like i don't know why but cool like i literally didn't know, know anything and then i found, asked somebody that's done it and they're like this is what's gonna happen and then you do it and experience it yourself and now you're like oh my gosh I feel super clear headed. I feel more electric. I feel more in tune. Why? I don't know, but I just know that that's how I felt and that's what I experienced. So that's me. Yeah. That's my experience. You got to find and, and that's you know that's what I was saying. I'm not an expert in it, but I I talk to experts and I I have watched people in clinical situations where their end of life and death situations use it and recover. And and I'm like, you know, like the people that haven't had the experience like you said you know it's just it if you haven't had the experience then why would you even comment about it and it's like you think that's going to kill you if you do it once try it it's yeah. like wait it's like it's like hey I, and then i'm going to go one step further there are all kinds of things in the weird world of 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 interpersonal relationships where that is done and it's and it's like and people do this on a regular basis and i'm like yeah yeah I've I've heard of I've heard of um athletes before games anytime they were injured they would fill their bathtub up with pee. And yeah, I did that. Yeah, you know. So. Yeah, I just I just you know I get you get the homeopathic. The more the more functional your fascia is, you just like a homeopathic. You just you yeah. just urinate in the bath and it's fine. Yeah. So so anyway, so let's let's get into the original movement. Let's get into the cure right, cool. of everything. All right, cool. So today we're gonna go based off. You said it earlier, and I was gonna ask. What is the, like, so when you do a fashion maneuver, say, and then like that, like your heart rates, you know, like your heart rate jumps and you're like, oh, like, you know, like we're almost trying to catch your breath. What would you call that? Is that an emotional release? Like, is that a. Well, so all energy is motion, is in motion, is emotion. So the technical aspects of this is what is, uh, <clears throat> what is a metabolic function? Like we have a, a belief that, work equals force times distance works for the body so the hot, bigger the weight the longer i carry it the more work i do that's only partially true because when i start doing it over and over again the body builds all this compensatory action so i don't sweat when i do it like if uh, i uh, run up a hill every day after a couple of weeks i don't even know i don't even breathe hard yeah. so the metabolic action is down so if i do a new movement that's why when you do a pretzel squat for the first time you're like sweating bullets yeah so what it is 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 the body is a circulatory system the blood circulates every 45 seconds like a cycle and it goes all the way through the body and it goes into the lungs 
the more blood volume, and, and as we have more demand for that blood to put oxygen in the tissue, more blood has to rush to the lungs through pressure. That pressure of the blood rushing to the lungs is the metabolic effect, which creates, which creates our, um, uh, which creates our, our metabolism. That's how, because the more metabolic effect, the more we metabolize. Yep. Cool. So you know the terminology and everything. I just know the movement that we're going to do. So <laughs> we're going to reference you back to what you just said, and we're going to experience exactly what you just said. Okay. Let's do okay. it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just move our neck and our head, our shoulders, just move it around a little bit. I always like to just check in, see, like, how do you feel now? How do you feel once you oxygenate? That's how I look at it. You're giving your body a very vital nutrient. So all we're gonna do, the first one, we're gonna take our hands, put it down a little bit. We're gonna take our hands, and this one is gonna be a one, two, three. So you're gonna inhale for three seconds, you're gonna squeeze your hands and your feet. As you exhale, you're gonna let everything go. Yep, but okay, it's so squeezing like this, right? Yep, and then it's gonna be a slow let go. So we're gonna just go slow up. And then slow, let everything go like a waterfall. Feet yep. too, right? Crunching your feet. Yep. Yep. Squeeze the ground. Squeeze the ground. Okay. Squeeze the hands. Doing six of them. Here we go. Squeeze in. Let it go. Yep. Breathe in taller. Squeeze hot, tight. Let it down slow. Up, squeeze up taller. Let it go. Three more, squeeze tall. Let it go. Exhale it away. One more. And release. Now wiggle those toes, wiggle those fingers. Move your neck side to side. I got release in my right shoulder already. Okay. So we're going to do that same thing now, what you did earlier, where you pulled it up and then just drop. So like when you exhale, imagine the way I like to imagine is you're doing like a, like you're, you're strong. And when you let go, everything is like you're dropping all the weight. The weight of okay. the world. Okay. okay. All right. We're going to do six of those. So same thing, same concept. Breathe up. When you exhale, just let it drop. Here we go. Inhale tall. Let go. Yep. Again, try to just drop all the weight. Let go. Let go. Last three. Oof. Two more. Last one. Let go. And shake it out a little bit. Move your neck. Move your head. Come aware. It's so yeah. simple. And and I and I feel it, the change. I said that last week too. Yeah. Okay, we'll do one more off of that. So that same thing we just did. Now, instead of dropping, we're going to inhale up and around. And when you exhale, try to like, the way I like to imagine is a turtle coming out of its shell. So imagine your body is here and you have to grow three inches taller and reach, reach taller than your body knew it could. Okay, so inhale, pull those shoulders up. Pull it back into that shoulder, that back, and then stand up taller. Good. Exhale it down to the floor. Good. Just grow taller. Best three. And blow it down. 
Last two, imagine a giraffe. And the last one, and relax. And then move your neck, move your shoulders, walk around a little bit. <clears throat> Feel taller. Yeah, I feel taller. Okay. So now right into that one. Now we're gonna go to the, the hips. So now basically what the way I look at it is as so above, as so below. So our hips are our shoulders, our shoulders are our hips. We gotta find everything in between. Our breath is the connection. So now everything is gonna be focused on our diaphragm and our hips. So now put your hands like your pinkies right on your hip bone. Yeah. And like you're like you're like holding your like you're holding yourself. Like imagine like pretend like you're you're back yeah. in your own womb. You know, and yeah. you're just like that. So now point those toes in just a little bit. And what we're gonna do is three balloon breaths. So try to expand this as big as you can and you're standing up tall. When you exhale, squeeze your pelvic floor. Okay, so squeeze those hips, squeeze your, your glutes. Everything is right here. And then exhale, squeeze your legs, your hips. You know, like you're getting rooted, like a tree is getting rooted into the ground, into your body. You know, every breath, connect to your toes. Two more. Last one, squeeze as you exhale. Good. That's good. Okay. We got one more after this one, then we'll do a little short discussion. So this next one, that same concept, now you're just gonna inhale, lift your toes off the floor. When you exhale, you're pushing, you're pushing all your way into the into the floor, into yourself, and squeezing, squeezing, constricting your whole body, letting go after you so, inhale. So lifting the toes on the exhale. On inhale. So inhale. Inhale. Up. Okay. And then and squeeze exhale, you're down. Push, yep. Like you're like, imagine like inhale like this, like your body. When you exhale, you're pushing everything okay, into the got floor. It. So the way I like is a tree, you're spreading your, your thing. When you exhale, you're getting grounded. You're getting rooted. Okay? Hands right on that diaphragm. Really spread wide through that belly. Here we go. Six breaths. Lift up. Exhale. Push in and squeeze. Grow tall. And down and ground. Imagine a tree, grounded. Two more. Best one. Shake it out, walk it off. Yeah, I could actually uh, feel the right hip, which is slightly tendency to elevate and more con con contraction in the right side. And mm -hmm. I notice it more now, like I notice more of a pulling of the shoulder and a lifting of the hip rather than a pulling over. And yeah. I could notice that as I was doing that, I, on my right side was tighter, so I squeeze a little harder, push it forward, and my right hip starts to drop. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, That's you so say all the, time. the body is designed to do what? The body has one design. And what is its design? To fix yeah. itself, to heal itself, it and the heal right itself, self. Yeah. Right oh, man, you know what? That's, I, it blows me away because this is the second time we've done this. And the, the ease at which, at which we're doing it, like, like the, it's so simple. Yeah. I'm not 
you know, I, I like hyperventilation I do with, with Ryan and stuff like that. But this yeah. is so simple. It doesn't threaten anything. And I feel charged. Like, I feel goosebumps. Yeah. Wow. The way I look at it, what I've understood more and more through Human Garage and all these things, the body is in stress. The body is under stress. How do you get the body out of stress? How do you get the body into restore mode? You know? Yeah. There's so many ways to do it. Which way can you actually consistently come back to that you you always have to tool? Well, this is what I like about what you're doing. It's it's very aligned with fashion maneuvers because in like yoga or most practices, you exasperate adrenaline uh, through stretching or moving or pushing, and then you drop, and that's Wim Hof and stuff like that. The challenge it works, but the challenge of that is. If you do it over and over and over again, you're pushing your adrenaline buttons and your body fatigues out. And it yeah. creates long-term issues. But this is without creating any stress in the body, you're actually dropping, which is a fascial meter over. That's what it does. Yeah, hundred percent. So, so we'll do we'll do three more, three more of them, and then we'll just finish out with that. So this next one, um, when we inhale, I just want us to stand tall. Like imagine like, so everything I do I like imaginary things so I can see. So imagine a soldier and you're just connected with your team, whatever that means, whatever that looks like for you. So is that now in this life, in the past life, whatever, you're just going to stand with both hands over your heart. You're going to stand up as tall as you can. Just three breaths. We're going to do three through our nose and three through our mouth. And every breath, just stand up taller, connecting to your own heart. Here we go. Three breaths, inhale through your nose. Blow it all the way out. Two more, even bigger. All the way out. Last one. And release. Three through your mouth. Release, bigger, release, that's one, release, next one we're going to reach tall and wide like a star, you can move your feet wide too, so you can really take up space. Three breaths through our nose, three breaths through our mouth. Every exhale, tell your body release. Here we go. Inhale through your nose. Release. Bigger star. Release. Bigger star. Release. Three through our mouth. Best one, feel the energy. Last one, hands on our hips. Stand tall, just like that first one. Now you're just grounded and rooted in all your strength. Three through your nose, three through the mouth. Here we go, through the nose. Three through our mouth. Release. Release. And release. And then before you end, give yourself a hug. Tag yourself on the back. Tell yourself, great job. Good job. Good job here. <clears throat> wow, it. it's it is. It, I mean, I'm I'm still shocked how how simple, how easy, and how uh, rewarding the practice is. 
Do you yeah. do this every day? A form of it. So it's kind of um, normally what I do is 15 minutes of 15, 20 minutes human garage. And then I do this because now it's like, I literally feel like I'm like discovering what I don't know. Right. I'm un because now I've unpeeled layers, traumas, whatever emotions. And now it's about learning my body, like learning my body and learning what gets the body to be upright in alignment. So the body efficiently breathes. Have you done, have you ever done these ones? Nuh uh. I mean, not in a while. Yeah, yeah. Take your elbow, right, uh, right elbow. Take your left hand, turn the skin. Go over. Lean over. Turn your head into the elbow and breathe in three times. Then take your right foot, step behind and lean over more. That's different. Yeah, so it's, That's it's upper body. That's upper body reset. Yeah, it's uh, it's in I know it's in the barefoot sprinter routine number two. It's on our website. And uh, let's do the other side. Turn the head into it, breathe in. Left foot behind. <clears throat> so, um, you know, the fashion maneuvers is like a menu of stuff. So what we've done on our website now recently, most people haven't gone there because it's brand new. As we put all these short routines that we do, that's called the barefoot sprinter routine number two. Also do the wrist and here, you actually, you'll feel it. So take your right hand, put it up there, take your left hand, turn the skin inward. Now turn the hand outward more. Feel that tension? Now pull the hand up and push the hand through. So pull the left hand up and push it through and then go like this. And then you do it all over. Now, now, interesting enough, take a breath and see, uh, check right left side. Right side's easier. It's a lot easier. It's like yeah. I literally remember, feel like it's like you put a, a electric glove on. That's how I literally like, remember what I was saying earlier about the body's pressurized, and when you touch yeah. my body, when I breathe, you'll feel it expand, and you can you can touch my feet finger, and you can feel a slight expansion in my finger or my hand when I breathe because yeah. the fascia is loose, so I have like a balloon. Let's do the other side though. Left hand, torque, turn. And then pull and push the hand through. And I even move my fingers together sometimes like this. So the first thing I thought of is literally, this is like, this is literally clearing the channel so your body can like eliminate, you know? Like Yeah, it's actually, you're, you're right. This is large intestine and this is long. That's elimination. Yeah, that's how I felt. That's what I literally <laughs> feel like. That's literally, it's for grief. And that's, that's elimination. And you can, you can do it, let's do one more. Take your, uh, your arm like this, take your right hand, right arm, check it out, take your left hand, grab the skin, rotate it around the femur. So turning outwards. Now, 
put it at your side, pull the, pull the skin down and pull your shoulder up. And then move. Keep pulling that shoulder up. And then also lift the hand outward, reaching up, trying to pull off into a wetsuit. Wow, I'm getting, I did some stuff on the weekend and now I'm feeling it kick in like, I've, like I literally feel like I'm doing psilocybin right now. I love this so much because literally now what I'm now, this is literally what happens to me. I, that just happened. Now my brain, my body and brain are saying, how do I recreate that exact feeling or experience with very low effort? You know what I mean? Exactly. You invite like, that's breath, literally, that's literally breath. happening to me as so I'm So when like, you oh, constrict oh. your fascia, yeah. so let's do the other side. So when you constrict your fascia, just like that, and turn the hand inward, just breathe. It changes the pressure. So hand down, pull the fascia down, lift the shoulder up. Yeah, so when the body, it's a balloon. And yeah. so if I squeeze part of this balloon and I breathe, the pressure has to go somewhere else. It's yeah. like an air mattress, right? And we just don't think of our body that way. We, we see the body as fascia dominant movement, pressurization. So like when the fascia stabilizes, all those little, those little mesh things that carry water, they're like tubes and they go and they, Pressurize, you go, boop, 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 and then pressurize up in milliseconds with water. You can see it on fascia magnified 25 times. You can actually see it happen. Yeah. We, 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 and, and that happens. And then all the tissue, the muscle tissue, the nerves and all that move through that webbing of fascia. That's why when our fascia gets dehydrated, it contracts on a muscle or on a nerve. That's why dehydration is the enemy of the body. Yeah. Yeah, that was powerful. Yeah, so now you can play around a little bit more and just <clears throat> it's, what we're doing is we're getting we're gonna we're gonna have diagrams and videos and stuff like that that start to explain this so people can conceptualize it. But part of the reason why we didn't release a lot of the science on this is because people would dive into the science without the experience. Yeah, and if they do that, they're gonna miss it. They're gonna do the same thing that they did with fashion maneuvers that they did with yoga. Yeah, or with qigong yeah. or whatever they're gonna yeah. they're gonna get in and and intellectualize the practice so what we just did is here do it yeah what would you say how have you been able to navigate the experience more than and then adding right the supporting cast instead of saying this is information this is science this is you know what i mean like yeah, because you've done, mean, we, you've done a great job you've done a great job but i mean especially up front but up front people are like Where's, there's no science on this. There's no science on this. And I'm like, you guys, science is the, is the testing and trying of things. I'm not going to let other people, like, I'm not going to let people taste the food and tell me, oh, that's good. That tastes good. This one tastes good. I'm going to go taste it myself. That, yeah. That's what science is. It's like, here, let me taste the food. I'm going to tell you all about it. So you don't have to taste it yourself. And I'm like, that's not science. That, that is then completely the opposite of science. So what we call science today through the peer review, peer, peer review is, is, a, is a like contest. How many people like you? It has nothing to do with, it has nothing to do with truth. Nothing. Yeah. And you see this because you have new science coming up right now, which contradicts eons of belief systems. And then people are going, yeah, you know, like when more when there's more peer reviews, then I'll test it. I'm like, you're gonna let
Sorry, what'd you say? I said I said people wait for the credible university to come up with a study for them to yeah. deem something as yeah. Yeah, it's like it's it's such a bizarre because we've got a culture that says this is the right way to do it, but human beings are designed to experience because your experience eating or doing or doing something is going to be different than mine. Science is is in the reporting and the observation and reporting of that experience. And if there's a difference to explain why. So yeah. Well, we, yeah, you can't pay, you can't put experience into one size fits all. One person has this experience when they do this, another person has this, but we're going to say, well, this is what we want to say. So we'll say, we'll say that. Cause even, like even the other what, part about it too, is we all have completely different genetic patterns. So mm -hmm. if I impose something on my body by default, it has to act different. I have twins, identical twins that I've yeah. done experiments with over the, over the last, you know, uh, decade and change. And, and, and one thing that was bothering me is like, why, when I have identical twins, I apply the same treatment and I have different results. And, and it's just the way it is. It's like, and I'm like, N no, that's, if it's exactly the same biology and yeah. genetics, then it has to act the same. If it doesn't act the same, then you need to explain why it's not acting the same. And this is where I was at with, with my, with my doctors and my scientists. And, and I'm like, you can't just say, well, that's the way it is. So what I found was, is that, is that the way that we process the all eight j twins, they still have a unique experience. They see things from different angles. So one sees a, a one sees a, an action on their parents from the front and perceives a threat. The other one saw it as an action and perceived the helping, but they didn't communicate to each other. So one thought there was a threat, one thought there was a help, but that changes my experience, the way I act later on. Yeah. Yeah. I heard somebody say recently, long-term happiness is determined by our perception of life, not what happens to it. 90% of our long-term happiness comes from our perception of what happened. Yeah, I'm so hundred percent. Well, I know, but I was like, I was like, but even, but yeah, it's, it's really like whatever you see, whatever you articulate it as, however you, you know. If you have a pain here in your body, if I inflict a pain on you and start squeezing really hard, and I take my hand, uh, you take your hand, you put it right up where the pain, where I'm inflicting it, the pain drops by 50 to 70% the second you do that. So that means the, the body's perception is that I'm paying attention to it. So now the signal of pain reduces mm -hmm. its frequency. Because you said, because I remember last week you said, when I have a two pain and I think fear, it goes to an eight, right? Or it goes to a six? Yeah, if you're stressed out, you can, a two pain can be anywhere from a four to an eight, depending on the level of stress. So, yeah. so basically, uh, pain is your body's way of, exp it's, the, it's, the, it's the most um, programmable way to adjust the body's reaction and action, action and reaction. And so what we've done is demonized pain and said it's bad. And so that what happens is the fear of pain doubles the pain. Mm. Because fear is the that's emotion. True. Yeah, that's true. And that's why, pe that's why people would choose to not do very simple things. H human garage, breath work, very simple things because they have to feel whatever emotion is. Yeah, it's like you're going to go get in a... People that go do this, they can experience this in a, like a cold plunge. Yeah. Is that they stand outside, they're... then they get in, they do it, <clears throat> they get out and they're like cold, but then they get out, they, they normalize, they get out and then they have such a good experience. So what is, what is so hard about getting in there? It's the release of emotions. You're building up emotional energy to do things. And this yeah. is one thing we know, and it's like, here's another way to look at it. If you've got to, if you've got to go pack up your, your buddy's house, your, your friend's house, and, or you got to pack up your house, your house takes longer and is harder than it is to pack up somebody else's. Why? Because everything that you touch has some sort of memory and emotion attached to it. Yeah. <clears throat> That's true. I, I experienced this once that it's, um, <clears throat> I wasn't feeling well and I had a move It was a corporate move though. So in other words, the movers are coming in, packing everything up and unpacking it. And so I was so stressed out. I, I just got up in the morning and says, I can't move. I'm not going to move today. 
And the movers are already there. And I'm like, oh, shit. So anyways, so I was feeling, I was waiting for this big, long, exhaustive thing. Two hours, they had packed up the entire house, three bedrooms. And you're like 10 guys or whatever. And then, and then boom, moved it over and three hours unpacked it all. And I'm like, that was super painless. But I'd never, every other time I'd moved it 50 times in my life, I probably, I, I did it myself and it was painful. And this is where I started to recontextualize what emotion does to motion or movement. That's so interesting. I bet a lot of people like literally don't want to move because of what you just said. Like they, that's why they don't want to move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like, uh, the pain of, you know, like, what do I do with this item? My dad gave it to me. Yeah. But it's been sitting there for like nine years. You've never touched it. Yeah. So, Give up all your possessions and follow me and you too shall find the kingdom. Well, at first I started giving up all my material possessions. Like I only have some shirts and shorts now. I don't, I don't own anything. So, yeah. And, and uh, I thought that was the journey, but what, what, it, what it was, that was at first, it was the, the, the emotions that were attached to why I bought it, what I had it, what I did in it. But then after that was all gone, my, my possessions were all my beliefs about things like, safety and money and relationships and <clears throat> and it just keeps going deeper deeper and deeper yeah the i'm at the end of that journey I, I feel like i i don't i don't have too many things in my life right now like um like some of the social things like some some guy at 71 years old was talking about peroni's disease i'll tell you one today <clears throat> that's when it's um it's a by it's a curvature of the penis and they can't get an erection right and and it's it's kind of painful and it and he's 71 years old and can you imagine that it's like what that does to your psyche right the the amount of care that went into asking that question and the amount of care within my organization that that handled that question to get to me and then the emotions that were associated with it, which is unbelievable and I'm like, <clears throat> here's, a, here's a man who's healthy in every other way, 71 years old, and he really has to ask a question and he doesn't get the right answers. He's trying to get an answer. And, and I see this, especially, you know, women have this even worse than men because of all the, you know, if I have a disease or discomfort, I'm ashamed to, to talk about. It. Yeah. That's so interesting. It's interesting because it's true and it's like even if it's like where do where is the space where people can be authentic where is the space where you can really share true authenticity you know here exactly we're creating that space and uh you know we get everything from you know from social and mental disorders to physical things and and we we don't always have an answer but yeah. what we have is the compassion to hear the question yeah without going oh yeah oh yeah. yeah yeah well i appreciate you gary and whole human garage team you know it's been a it's been an honor and a blessing to share my gift with you know all these beautiful people and just human garage like it's so simple this is this is this is every time i come on here i really want people to know i had two hip surgeries this completely transformed my life in a way that i know i could mm -hmm. it, it took me from it's gonna be a rough one i'm 19 years old this is gonna be a long life to i'm good we're gonna make this an amazing life that was the start of like uncovering trauma suppressed emotions all these things that made me realize i can you know so breath work has been quadrupled 10x you know like I was, I don't even, I wouldn't even want to say what number because it's, it really, this is the phrase that I've been saying, make space for greatness. Doing fashion that. maneuvers, doing breath work is making space within my body, within my spirit, within this existence to be greater. I love that. Thank you for saying that. It's a great way to end. I appreciate you, Isaiah. You too. Make Much space love. for greatness. Make space for greatness. Peace. <clears throat> That's a cutout.
What do you guys think? Put in the comments what your, what your impression was. I've been resisting the journey. Yeah, I get you. Make space for greatness. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Isaiah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to quote you all over for that one. Make space for greatness. Fascial maneuvers helps you make space for greatness. Kelly Buddha. Love it all. Just blown away. No pun intended, but it, just blown away with the breath work. Yeah, he is real, isn't he? Yeah, breath is prana. Prana is life force energy. Which breath is in the amount of life force? Yeah. Which type of breath work was that? Um, <clears throat> that's his. Follow Breath Messiah. Um, hey, uh, Isaiah, can you um, put a comment in this section here? I'll put it in there too. Yeah. So follow Breath Messiah and give him a shout out. Give him some love. He does a lot of programs that you guys can sign up to. <clears throat> Thank you, Annie. Appreciate you. Minimalistic approach to breath work. Yeah. Wasn't that cool? I mean, I feel really good, but I, I feel like I didn't do anything. I almost feel like I should do more, but then like I had a few like, like uh, rough spots in my shoulders. I don't know, man, they're so simple. So simple. Yeah. So if you guys enjoyed that, <clears throat> send them a message. Tell them what you thought. I mean, that's a really interesting way to look at breath work, right? Isaiah, very powerful name. Ruby Jean. 15 minutes till earlier. Okay. Breathwork was simple but powerful, yes. Ruby oh. Jean. Hi, Gary. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Um, no, I can't see you um, just because we're doing, um, you know, we're doing um, space for Roland. Um, is there any way that I could fix it maybe? No. I don't, you know, Ruby, Ruby Jean, it's uh, Mercury Retrograde. Our internet itself is actually down. I'm on, I'm on cellular in the mountains, so I was... was okay, I'm going to set that. myself. Yeah. Okay. There you go. I'm, now you're in and out. Okay, I'm 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 stabilizing right now. Hold okay. on. So maybe tell everybody the story about Roland. Yes, sir. So um in March um of, of this year, so March uh, 2023, um I was pregnant. I was almost eight months pregnant, so about um like 28 weeks and some days. And um I have two other lovely boys, um six and three, Bob and Albus. And so this was my third child. And um I was very excited and I woke up. Um, on Saturday morning on the 18th at 6 o'clock, I came downstairs because something felt weird. I was bleeding, and then he started to come out. So we had the, um, the ETs come. I rushed to the hospital, and they started checking for a pulse. And everybody was in there. All the NICU um, nurses was in there. Um, I, I'm a farm girl. I was homeschooled on a 20-acre farm. Uh, we had goats, so I was basically like Heidi um, out with the goats. I've birthed many um, animals. I've even, um, um, my horse had a stillborn actually one time, so I had to reach in there, grab it. So I felt that feeling when I was in the hospital room, and um, they checked a second time for the pulse. And the nurses are like, okay, we're going to try a third time. You know, there's number three, a third time to just double check and he was gone. So um, I had to um, sit there and, um, you know, let him, you know, go through the process. And I had him at like one o'clock. Um, I am very lucky because I got to bring him home. So I, I wrapped him up and my, si my older sister was there. Her husband's birthday is your birthday, Gary. Whoa. 21st of December. <clears throat> so um wrapped him up 
and um, we brought him home and um, uh, we saved him until um, in May and then we buried him. My husband dug the hole. He found a huge rock in where he was digging and he got to carve out his name and put the date. So I'm lucky enough that I can go there and see him. But I am a um, 12 degree Gemini sun. My moon is Aquarius, 19 degree Aquarius. And then I'm a 23 ascending Cancer. So as Aquarius, I um, is really hard emotions. Um, I, I didn't realize, but I was holding it in. I haven't really cried. Um, and I haven't bought him, him anything or, you know, really focused on that. And so now I just had, I was detoxing. I just had a very major detox. And things are opening up. My chest. And, um, and finally, on Saturday, I bought him this little um, stocking. And I realized that I can mourn. <laughs> yeah. And it's so awesome because, you know, you don't really realize that heaviness. When was it? What so, was the actual date that he, um, that he was still born? He, it was March. 18th so it's a nine master level pisces yeah that's a grand master pisces that's 25 degrees so in my head yeah so he was here to bring spirit to you and to connect you with spirit you know and you're you're a sagittarius gemini and you're a gemini cancer and you're rising so you're so you're all about teaching um, thinking of both both sides, teaching and helping community, and I can feel it right now. I can feel it in your throat. <clears throat> I think it feels like feels like you want to talk to Roland. I know. Um, well, it's it's hard because what's frustrating is um, my husband is um, he's a Leo. Pisces, um, Gemini, sorry, sorry, he's a Leo sun, um, a, a Gemini moon, and then a Pisces rising. He doesn't want to have a third child. I finally had my third child, and he died. That's the hard part, is I had my third child, and he's gone, and now everybody's like, they were so, my family was happy, that it kind of happened because it was it was kind of sudden for them and you know babies are so so hard which kids are not um kids are okay. not so let's, so. let's do this <clears throat> i'll hold space for roland dear roland my baby boy I don't know why you left me. I I feel bad that maybe I wasn't like a safe space for you. And I'm sorry. I know that you had such a higher purpose and you know, you know you were your own little soul. But I miss you. I miss you so very much. I wish I have an eight-month-old baby right now. I wish I have my three boys. And I do, but I miss you so much. And I'm sorry that I wasn't taking care of my body. And I wasn't that safe space for you. I love you so much. And I will always be here for you. You are my everything. Okay, repeat after me. Roland. <clears throat> Roland. 
Thank you for the time that we spent together. Thank you for the time that we spent together. I judge myself for not providing a safe space. I judge myself for not providing a safe but, space. But I know that's you. not but I know that's not true. But I know that's not true. You were you were a soul that came here for a moment to be with me. You were a spirit that was supposed to be with me for a moment. I felt you. I felt you. You were a part of my life. You were a part of my life. And I'm letting you go. And I'm letting you go. You're helping, me, you're helping me feel emotion that I wasn't able to express. You're helping me feel the emotions that I cannot express or don't know how to express and learning how to express. This experience is teaching me so much. This experience is teaching me so much. <laughs> I'm learning to love myself more. I'm learning to love myself more. By expressing what I couldn't express before. By expressing what I couldn't express before. You're always a part of me. You're always a part of me. Thank you. Thank you. What does that feel like, Ruby Jean? Um, I don't have thoughts in my head. Quiet again, or maybe for the first time. So. <clears throat> I perceive that Roland was a grandmaster Pisces that was helping you reconnect with your spirit. And that's what stops the thoughts. Thank you. It's bizarre that you couldn't see me today, but it's the only person that you need to look at today is you. Well, and it's the voice. I mean, you know, like I had dreams about you how we I thought that we were supposed to set up a zoom call and I couldn't make it you know for some reason like I couldn't there I couldn't go. meet <laughs> look at the only person you see on this call is you because that's the only person that's in this lesson sometimes I don't see myself you know you do um or or like I see myself and I it's more of like it's not as as personal you know it's like what 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 um you know what what can i be for others um you know not necessarily what i can be for myself i think that changes um, today oh yeah oh yeah ruby jane i'm Thank you. i'm I'm honored to be a part of your journey. Thank you. You started it. Like I said, for people, like I started following Gary like a month and like in January. And then I started going on the lives a week and a half. Um, I, I had, I was pregnant with Roland. And then a week and a half after I had Roland, I was on the live and I typed in, I had a stillbirth and Gary um, went live with me. And so this is the journey and i finally can mourn <laughs> it's awesome okay thank you so much gary I yeah. do. <laughs> wow <clears throat> that's powerful
You don't get that too often for sure. <clears throat> Let's take a moment and clear that energy before we go on to our next guest. Take your right hand, put it on your heart. Left hand, put it on your head. Thank you, Ruby Jean, for bringing that emotion to us today. Breathe into your mouth. Two. Three. Repeat after me, sometimes seeing myself as painful. I'm removing the pain from seeing myself. Breathe in through your nose. Two. Three. <clears throat> Okay, I'm gonna move over here for the rest of the call. And we have a special guest. Look at the Christmas tree. By the way, that's what it looks like. Okay. Here we go. Perfect. <clears throat> what do I have over here? This is by far the most important medical device that you will ever come in contact with. We, uh, we drink ionized water or filtered water because it's good for us because it gives us uh, hydrogen, it, it helps our immune system, but we breathe air, which is water, but we breathe air and it's not good for us right now. And we have so many stressors in our life and our body. This, this machine here uses water. It's the power of water here. <clears throat> That's all it is, nothing else. And it takes the fourth phase of water, water between a liquid and a solid, and it breathes it into my into my nostrils, into my cell, hydrates my fascia, and cleans out oxidative stress, removing protein folding issues. What does that mean practically? It means that if you have severe autoimmune, if you have severe bacterial infections, if you have headaches, if you have brain fog, if you have congestion, if you have congestive heart issues, <clears throat> you're taking all of the stress off that your body is producing trying to heal itself. So you have more capacity to heal. So we're gonna be talking to Rowena um, from Ng3 Corp and Nano V. Here we go. <clears throat> Got it on here. Hey Rowena. Hello. Hi there, how are you? I'm doing good, how are you doing? That's good, looks like you're in my hometown. You're up in Vancouver still. I am. Uh, oh, geez, can you put something underneath here? I am in Vancouver now. Well, yeah, just I, for Christmas. I got to come and visit. That's all there is to it. Hey, everybody, I'm in Seattle. This is Rowena Gates, but I'm from Vancouver originally, so I love to any excuse to go up there. Gary's a very good excuse, of course. <laughs> so, Rowena, uh, Rowena, sorry, um, how did how did you? What was the inspiration to come up with this medical device? This medical device is actually copying something the body does naturally. And it was known um, in, in biology and cell science that um, the, the way the proteins fold and the proteins are doing all the work to repair things, it was understood that they relied on the water and able to do their jobs. And they're all embedded in water throughout the body, as, as you pointed out, it's water's everywhere in there. And um, so that there was a certain amount that was already known, which was there was a reactive oxygen s a species that emitted a specific wavelength that changed the nature of that water to the easy water that you mentioned, more gel-like on the surfaces inside the cell. And so our invention, all of that was known in cell biology, that proteins rely on that for folding and they have to fold in order to work and so on. All of that's known um, 
in cell biology, but our innovation was to do it artificially outside of the body and then deliver it across the humidity that you're breathing. I should be breathing mine too, that would be nice. <laughs> um, but you're breathing a humid airflow when you use the device and the water droplets that you inhale are adjusted with that very same wavelength and some other wavelengths that are more powerful. So basically it copied the body and then amped it up with additional wavelengths. And so that's what you're breathing. The water droplets are modified. And when that touches your mucous membrane, it connects to the water in your system. So, so that, what is a protein folding issue and why is that important? Oh, well proteins, it's interesting because we always think of the protein that we eat, but proteins do everything. They're the workhorse of the cell. They do almost everything in your body. How many proteins do we have in our body? <laughs> I'd have to do the math. There's probably six, eight, ten thousand in each cell, and there's seventy-five trillion cells in your body. <laughs> yes, there's a lot. And, and we we've identified how many of those proteins. Um, of the different types of proteins, they assume there's about nine hundred thousand different types, and we we are somewhere around fifty thousand or. So you know, basically what we're saying is we don't know crap about the human body. Right. It's super dynamic. And so proteins are formed and then, you know, they go away and something else happens. And so there's so many different types of proteins and then they act in ways that we don't understand. The interaction is the really complicated part. And the, the reason we know that is we see drug interactions um, almost about 80% of drugs are tweaking a protein. They're turning on a receptor, adding something. They're doing something with proteins. And um, we have so many of these medications that have side effects. And it's because people don't know all the thing that particular protein are doing, all the things it's doing. And so they tweak it for one thing, but then something else happens uh, completely, uh, you know, so it's a surprise and that's because of the interactions. We don't understand them. And so that's where you get those side effects of drugs and they're all over the map. So how, how is it that simply water can have one of the most profound effects on the human body? We are like 99% of the molecules in the body are water. Now water, is, it's a very small molecule, so it's, but it's so ubiquitous. And you mentioned hydrating the fascia, all of that. It's everywhere throughout the whole system, just like the fascia is. And so it's really profound because it's, it's everywhere and the body relies on that uh, for any of its activities. Like you would know from, you know, building muscle or something, how important the hydration is. Um, what we do is not hydration per se, we don't add the, the water to make you more hydrated, but by the nature of that water, it will have an impact throughout everything. It touches everything. There's, it's, it's the basis, you know, of every cell and what's between the cells as well. So what, what, are, what kind of conditions would I like predominantly use this for? I'm not saying that it cures anything. I'm just saying, what are some of the conditions that I would use this as part of my treatment? So first of all, it's um, an underlying assistance. So it almost doesn't matter what the condition is. If you give your body a little extra help, your body knows what to do and it addresses issues. So the, all of the chronic illnesses are ones that people use right. it for because they need a lot of help and, and very specifically, they need free uh, oxidative stress damage and free radical damage to be addressed. It's always, all the chronic diseases are related to having too much damage and not enough repair. And so this boosts the re repair side. There's no repair done in the body that's not done by proteins. <laughs> and so, um, you know, like we have we have people that use this for Parkinson's, for MS. We have people that use this for competitive sports to recover faster. We have people that use this post surgery, and these are all people that I know personally that are using the device yeah. and what they're using it for. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have people that are using this for heart disease, tachycardia, 
uh, autoimmune conditions and stuff like that. And around here, we have a lot of people coming through with autoimmune conditions. We have brain fog. We have uh, we have um, uh, skin irritations, rash. We've got um, anxiety, depression. And I noticed that when you're on the device, and it's just one, if somebody has anxiety, uh, skin rash, brain fog, brain fog is gone like in 20 or 30 minutes usually from using the device and what I've observed. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to go back to the very first thing you said, because we could talk for a week probably, but the very first thing you mentioned was Parkinson's. And early in the conversation, you talk about protein folding and why is it important. And I just want to mention here that the proteins have to fold into a complex 3D shape, but when they misfold, they can stick together. And that's an issue in neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, any of the neurodegenerative aspects of things. The proteins are not only not working correctly, they're causing damage because they form plaques or tangles. And so keeping things working smoothly is especially important for the brain. And you certainly don't have to have, um, you know, something that's already gone wrong for that to be a factor. And yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not in any of those conditions that haven't been, but what I found initially is, is that um, uh, my fascia gets very, very liquid. So if I'm gonna do fascia maneuvers, I can, I can move and, and move past the normal range of motion. And then when I breathe, that's bringing oxygen and hydration to that tissue that normally isn't getting it. And right. I've used this with professional athletes for injury cycles. Um, and, and for myself, my own practice, I, I, I use it every day. Um, I, do it, I, I do it at like 5, 5.30 in the morning. Every single day I sit on here and I do my messages. It's the easiest way um, for me to give my body a boost and a hand without giving it a medication. It's not taking over any of my functions. It's just letting me do what I do easier. Right. And the, the body's amazing. I mean, it knows what to do and it can do it. Giving a little boost is great. And you mentioned professional athletes and then everything else you talked about earlier really falls under the, the category of, you know, healthy aging. And so I want to just tell you about some testing that's been recently done um, that relates to both of those two. And it's with VO2 max and other metabolic tests. And um, what was amazing with NanoView was they showed an improvement in VO2 max in one session. Wow. In minutes. And, um, and so just so everybody understands what that means to an athlete is huge. It's, it's performance is how much you're, you, how much oxygen you can use uh, to, you know, to perform. But the interesting thing is, is that VO2 max is also used as the measure of biological age because it's the the single best measure of all cause mortality, which is all those heart, you know, respiratory, all those different illnesses that you talked about that people die from. And so the people with higher VO2 max are less likely to to die. And so they use it to measure biological age. And so we basically could say, well, in 20 minutes, you could get biologically younger. <laughs> You know, you know, it's, um, it's amazing. So I, uh, I've been, you know, practicing fashion maneuvers for a long time. My health has continuously gotten better. I've looked and felt younger. Um, I've added this to my routine since um, uh, a little less than a year ago um, on a daily basis. Now, I've, I've known about this from the clinical side back in 2018, but on a daily use side, added this to this. And I've had this rapid acceleration since I started using this on a daily basis. What I, what I noticed is here's one of the factors that I can pin, pinpoint is that I would breathe on an average resting breath rate around seven to eight breaths per minute. But since I've started using this, my, if I'm sitting here, my breath per minute is between two and a half and three. Real, that's really low. That is, and, and, we, and I've measured it over and over and over again to see. That, that means that I'm, I'm, I'm processing and absorbing um, oxygen into my fascial tissue, my tissue. And I believe, because when I, when I worked with you, uh, when you came down to Mexico last year, you had the most uh, hydrated and loose fascia of anybody that, I, that I've worked with that wasn't being worked on by us. 
Yeah. And that meant, and this is something that you do every day. So I can take, you know, my working with you and then my own personal experience and say that the hydration of this in the fascia allows more oxygen to be dominant and uh, increasing my bore effect or my ability to, to, um, to maintain oxygen in the tissue itself so that I have more use of it. And it, things like breath holds are longer, like I, you know, two or three minutes in a breath hold without even, without even, without even, even having an issue. Oh, that's way more than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the fascia, it's the type of fascial maneuvers and, and, you know, and, but this, but this is what it's done for me. And I've watched now a couple people that have uh, purchased these devices and uh on parkinson's uh one in par parkinson's that i've been working with and watching and out of uh, minnesota and what's interesting is that i can see a, a completely steady increase in cognitive abilities and functional abilities even with the reduction of tremors because you, you can watch a baseline of somebody and then you add something new into the regime and you can see the difference yeah yeah exactly and that vo2 max measure it is also um, VO2 max is important for neurogenesis and all aspects of brain health. But I can see where the fashion maneuvers um, for Parkinson's in particular would just be profound because you can overcome the brain where the brain's got patterns that are not functional, that can be overcome. And so you might still have, you might still have it, but you don't act like you have it because your brain's found a way around. And since fashion. we since we don't see the the muscles moving the body, we see muscles as stabilizing the movement of the body. Fascia moves the body through uh, an impulse, and and I, and I do this all the time for scientists. I'm like, here's the math. You tell me how how uh, the brain moves the body when the brain's moving to a, a danger response before the or the body's moving to a danger response before the brain knows. So that being said, the things like Parkinson's is if fascia is moving the body and the muscle stabilizing, the muscle is shaking, but the fascia is trying to get a signal through. That's the way I see it. And this is why when I work with people with Parkinson's and MS, they walk normal after doing work yep. with them. Yeah, assisted fascia maneuvers, and they stop having tremors and shaking. What I've noticed is that if we can't hydrate the fascia, then those things don't stop. It doesn't matter how good the work is. Oh, really? Um, yeah, that, that surprises me, but not not entirely. But it well, imagine this is a muscle. Okay, if I constrict it right here, if the fascia, if I constrict the fascia right here, and then I lift, I'm restricted. Now I have to use more energy to get there. Right. And it's like stabilizing a muscle. So if I take this away, then I don't use that energy. I'm not pulling. The muscle's not trying to stabilize me. This is, this is how we see the body. This is how we explain it. This is how we work with professional athletes. You know, consequently, every one of our Olympic athletes has a medal. <laughs> yeah, and there's a reason for that. What? Every one of our Olympic athletes has, has a medal. <laughs> wow. And there's a reason for that. And, and so, so um, when we look at it this way, this is, this is where, I mean, we are going to push our science, you know, sometime towards the end of next year. But what's funny enough is that we have so much results now that it's not a matter of whether it works. It's, it's science now gets the opportunity to explain why it works. Correct. Correct. And I completely agree. And I think that it's so important um, that very, so often the fact that it does work is well ahead of the science. And actually, we were like that. We'd, we'd already done the testing to show that our device did work. And we knew mostly why it worked. But Gerald Pollack, who's here in Seattle, <laughs> was um, that last little piece of the water science of why it works. And um, it, it's very common that that part of the science is catching up. So now this is not, I mean, we've got two different versions of this. This is the commercial version. It's about 14,000 and change dollars in US dollars, but there's also a smaller version, right? That can be. Yes, there's an $8,500 device. And the difference is that one is twice, this one's twice as powerful. It's interesting that a, a lot of home users will buy the more powerful one because they get twice the benefit in the same amount of time.
And, and I want to emphasize to people the reason why this device, every component in this is, is specially made. That's why it's not something that you can go buy components off the shelf and just manufacture somewhere else and get it cheaper. So, the, and what I see this is, I know a lot of people have the ability to individually buy this, but we have a lot of medical professionals and doctors and doctor's offices. And I believe personally that every doctor's office should have this because or every, every treatment office should have this because if I'm doing body work on you and I do it, if I'm doing body work and I do a treatment on you, um, then by default, that treatment goes faster. So instead of spending 90 minutes doing a treatment, I'm only spending, um, literally, I'm only spending 60 minutes to, to process the same type of treatment. Yeah, yeah, and that's and, what I'm finding in Human Garage down in LA when I first met you. Yeah, that was the first thing I noticed is it took a treatment cycle down and reduced the amount of time. And since time is money in treatment, that, that, makes, that makes the return on investment really high. And I want, I want clinics and practitioners and groups of people, whether they're associations, even like, soccer associations for, for moms who are, they spend all this time and energy with their children protecting them from injuries in soccer this is one of the ways you can do it yeah you know the parents groups and the associations could get together purchase a machine and have it there because you have you just sit on this for 20 minutes and it helps the recovery it helps the performance right and the other area i'd love to see this because i'm with you it's out of reach for you know the average person this is a a, a lot of money um but if it were in the workplace where people are now going back into the office and so if it's if there's one there a whole bunch of people can share a device there or in a, a even a gym you know a fitness center that device actually there's a little slot in the front of it you might be able to see um but you can use a smart card in it so a gym could put it in and then people only use it if they have permission basically with the card oh that's what the card's for Yep. Oh, that is so cool because yeah. I got the smart card I carry around. I just didn't know what it was for. And see, every, there's people that go to the gym three times a week or more often. So they just go there and use it. Yeah, the recovery time, I, like when you're exerting yourself, like when I, like I, when I go climb the falls and I have a really, really heavy uh, climbing session, I come back here and get on this right away because then I have no muscle fatigue or DOMS the next right. day. That's a, the, that and DOMS is interesting. That's a very, very much a, a protein folding thing that I won't get into. But basically, when you exert yourself, your body goes into high production of proteins. If they don't get folded, it's it's a health issue. It can cause real problems, like like I mentioned with the plaques and so on. And so your body goes into um, what's called an unfolded protein response. And it, it goes into overdrive resources to get these proteins folded so they're not a problem. And that's why you feel so tired later because you've hijacked all your energy into this folding response to keep you healthy. And so with DOMS, you end up feeling like, oh man, I'm just dragging, you know, for, for days sometimes. Because so it's interesting because, you know, all muscles, bones, tissues, organs are made in fascia. We're born in fascia, we're grown in a ball of fascia. So fascia goes through the muscle, around the muscle. It means that it's actually not a coating. So we don't even call it DOMS. We call it DOFS, delayed onset fascial soreness, because muscles don't get sore. Muscles contract. Mm. This is a whole new world that, that we're, and this is why fascial maneuvers is working. It's a new way of addressing the body. And what this is doing is, is, is on a high end helping us, helping me hydrate my fascia so that I have, I have more functional movement, less restriction, I get more oxygen into the tissue. The protein folding issues are gone away so my body recovers faster and it affects every disease and function in my body. This is why I use it every day. I love it. I love it that you appreciate this device so deeply, Gary, because you're not a big device guy. I, I don't believe in devices anymore. I've used every device known to mankind and they all work until they don't work and devices take away the body's natural ability to, to create an action. But this is just, from, this is like water. It's be, somebody, actually somebody challenged me. They wanted me, when my face swole up and I use this device with, you know, with, with the bio-optimizers and the power curve. And somebody was, was saying, you've got to use this, this, uh, this uh, tachyon machine, this laser machine. And I said, no, I don't use the device. And they said, well, you use this. And I said, ah, ah, ah. I said, you're crossing a boundary there. I said, I, I, drink, I drink purified and, and hydrogenated water because the water is polluted. 
I also take this because the air I breathe around me is not is polluted right now. And it doesn't matter where I live. I'm in polluted air. If I lived by a waterfall every day, I wouldn't have this issue. But every but we don't live in that environment this day. This is actually taking that pollution out of my water and giving me better water to put into my body. That's the only thing it does. And by doing that, it's not taking away a function from the body. It's just giving the body a hand. Yes, it's just a boost. And, and it might not be that big a boost, really. It's enough for the body to take over and do good things. So, Rowena, yeah. I appreciate you so much. This is like cutting edge science. The world will figure this out. Um, and it is figuring this out. I mean, you guys are all over the place right now, but the world will really figure this out soon. If we just give our body the right water, we're made of water. If we just correct the water that interacts with us, then our body heals itself. It, the body can, it's an unlimited what the body can repair and regenerate. So anybody out there who could help us get this more widely spread and accessible to people that don't have, um, you know, a, a, a chunk of money to drop down. And so it can be shared, put out there in community. I love the, the idea of community health. Any, any ideas, any thoughts, let me know because that's... Yeah, I'm sure they can reach out to you at Inc. 3 eng3.com or I'm rowena.gates at eng3.com Okay, and, and, I, and I want, there's a lot of people watching. I do, this is my promotion. This is what I'm telling people to do because we have clusters of people all over, mm -hmm. the, all over the world right now that are doing fashion maneuvers in groups and creating their own community centers. And yeah. it's even sometimes at a person's place. And you get 20 people that, to kick in and buy a machine. It's not, it doesn't cost a lot of money, but the impactful benefit of this is is immeasurable and i'm encouraging people who are in groups who are doing fashion meters i encourage you to get together uh purchase a machine lease a machine do whatever you guys can provide leasing or you have leasing companies to work with yeah it's a financing company actually so the person owns it at the end perfect yeah that's that's much better we don't want to have you know have to yeah. negotiate the value at the end of three years or something but yeah and that this um the big device is about 450 dollars a month in that range if it's financed for three years then it's then they own it outright yeah i think this, this it's a worthwhile investment for anybody who's in a group and what you're seeing right now is we have fashion maneuver groups starting around the world so I'm literally telling them to, to, to go get a machine. So you're gonna see a lot of people pick up machines here for that purpose. And we've, we have these in our centers. We're gonna, we're gonna get another one so we can put it down in Cancun. And we, I travel with it, which has been funny. I mean, I look like a, I look like a terrorist walking through with a bomb sometimes. And, and they look at it and I just go, can't breathe, I can't speak the language. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's I put this on. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it has a, a case that protects it. You can put it in the hold of an airplane or carry on. Um, yeah, I don't put it in the hold of an airplane. Just, I just, is this too expensive? <laughs> yeah. I, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to not have it. It's the one piece of luggage I wouldn't want lost. Correct. That, yeah, I agree there. So yeah, that's great. Well, um, it's so, so good to see you. I want to come and see you live. I'll figure that out if you're around for a few weeks. You were around for a couple of weeks. Let me know. We'll talk. Oh, that'd be awesome. Okay. So, Hi, Rowena. Rowena, your links are on our website, too. Yes. Oh, you wonderful. Can get to it. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Great. Bye bye. Hey, everybody. Um, if you haven't tried it yet, go to our website, go under products, go under um, partners, and go to Inc. 3 and look at the Nano B. Uh, it gives some specific details with the science. It's all patented science that you guys can look at. Um, and, uh, and it's peer reviewed. So the science behind this is incredible. Um, I, again, I know that this is out of the reach for most people personally, but this whole thing about fascial maneuvers and the human garage is to build community. Get together with the community people, chip in, grab one of these machines. It is life changing. I have seen so many benefits and effects by putting people on this. Um, and people who do it on a regular basis, they, I mean, just take a look at us, what's happening in our lives. You know, fashion maneuvers is great. This is just making fashion maneuvers better. So um, we have coming up uh, this week, tomorrow, we have raw reality 
Um, for those of you guys, if you're a 29 degree or a zero degree in your sun sign only, please contact us and let us know. We have a special group. We have a meeting on Thursday and we will be op operating this uh, into groups from zero to 29 uh, on the platform within a couple of months. So there'll be a group for everybody. We find that's the best way to, to get to know yourself. And in addition to that, if you haven't done it yet, there's a new reset that's starting and we're going to have thousands, hundreds or thousands of people starting at the same time um, and doing it every two weeks, starting a reset every two weeks. I believe we're starting at the first of the month. Uh, if you want to try it out right now, the new reset is up and open of 28 day reset. You can go to our website, sign up in the new app called Circle. We will be transferring. We're in the process of moving data over. But the new app allows you to do everything within the app. It notifies your phone. It has the, the video features. Instead of going to Zoom, it's in the app. Uh, allows you to connect with people. It's so much easier to use and so much more functional. Um, and uh, the new reset also is shortened down. So instead of one hour, uh, one and a half hour videos, there are segments cut out where you're looking at 15 or 20 minutes worth of the content we want you to see with new movements and new classes that are up there. And the classes are taught differently each time so that you get a different experience and there's different ways of, of expressing these classes. So go check it out if you haven't done it yet. Go to our website, sign up for the new app on the circle. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. For all no have. live on Christmas Day? No live on Christmas Day. <laughs> we will be doing it on this 26th right after for you Canadians. It's Boxing Day, but or unboxing or reboxing day. It depends on what kind of gifts you got. Chris Kadowski on the 27th. And on the 27th, we got uh, we got the um, nutrition program starting. It's a free introductory program. Go to our website, sign up right now. Again, it's a free introductory program. It's on our website. It's a nutrition program. If you're a beginner or you're advanced, it's going to be taking you through the range of nutrition from the way that we see it. This is different. If you are a nutritionist, you are going to learn stuff that you have never learned before, I promise you. If you're brand new, you're going to be able to keep and follow along with this. This leads up to a 12-week course that starts in January. And if you are a nutritionist or you're not a nutritionist, by the end of this, you're going to be super informed on how nutrition works, how supplementation works. December 31st, uh, Fashion Maneuvers class, New Year's Eve day. New Year's Eve day, Fashion Maneuvers class, December 31st. Again, go sign up on our website. Take care, everybody. See you tomorrow. Thank you.